Hi friends, it's Gwen. Today I'm going to do a review for you. And today's review is by an author that I claim to love. She's one of my favorite authors. I talk about her books often, but I don't really read them often. And I guess it's just from memories of reading her books for the first time, and I haven't read all of her books in the series, and it's the Kay Scarpetta series. And the book I'm talking about today is The Body Farm by Patricia Cornwell. It's the fifth book in the Dr. Kay Scarpetta series. And I have pretty much all of the books. I'm only missing a couple in the series, and it's a very big series, like over 20 books, I think. So anyways, um, I picked, I'm not a huge rereader, and Hmm, so I don't know why I keep books around. I guess in the hopes that maybe one day I will reread them. And sometimes I guess I will, like I plan to read a couple like around Christmas and I could see myself reading a couple books for, but for the most part, I'm not a rereader. But I did draw out of my TBR jar to reread a favorite book. And this is one in the Scarpetta series that has stood out to me through the years. This book was published in 1994. So yeah, it's pretty old and I read it way back way back. Um, so for the first time I read it, you know, I wasn't really on Goodreads or obviously I wasn't on BookTube and I really wasn't looking at it from like a critical standpoint. I just, I really enjoyed it. I loved the mystery crime drama um, and it just, I just loved it and I didn't rate books back then, but I knew that this was really good and one of my favorites. So this one stood out my mind, so I picked this one up to read, read it, finished it, and I'm going to talk to you about my thoughts. So the first thing that I want to touch on is it was published in 1994, you guys. It is a little bit dated, but not dated in a way that it actually bothered me. It wasn't like people were wearing something that was outdated or something like that. I don't know exactly what it was that made it feel a little outdated, but it did feel a little outdated, but I was okay with it. The thing that did bother me was that it was really a lot slower paced than I remember. And I don't know if it was me reading it at a slow pace or if it was slow paced. So I was a little bit confused on that. It, got a, it has a 4.02 rating on Goodreads and I ended up rating it a four stars. But basically what this story is about is 11 year old girl is murdered and Dr. K. Scarpetta, she is a medical examiner here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, which is where I live. Um, she is sent to go help investigate, um, find clues, um, find out what happened basically because she has a special set of skills that help her solve crimes than just a regular detective would. Um, when I was reading these when I was younger, I kind of wanted to be a forensic pathologist because of her. Her job just seemed so cool and she's so smart and so witty. And yeah, so I really wanted to do that. But um, so the crimes in this are believable and the problem that people usually have with her books is how do they ever figure that out? Well, the thing is, is like, you're not going to have all these open ended crimes, like throughout the series. Like I said, it's like a 20 book plus series. And if we just had like 20 unsolved crimes, like left open forever, that wouldn't be very enjoyable either. So yes, the crime is solved in this, but it is unexpected. And since I read this like so long ago, I didn't remember like who done it. And so I was shocked right along, just like I was the first time that I read it. And the big part that I remember about this book and the big part that stuck out in my mind is the body farm, hence the title. And a lot of people have complained that, oh, the body farms only in this book once, I don't even understand the point and all of that. If you don't know what a body farm is, it's basically an area of land, a farm, where they keep dead bodies and they have them under certain conditions or do different things to them. You know, they're exposed to the elements or they're in a rusted out car or they're under a tree or they're, you know, out in the sunlight or they're submerged in water or just different things. And they kind of find out how this 
body decomposes, what happens to it, what insects come along, um, how different metals react to their skin, if they're like laying on something or things like that. And uh, that just intrigues me so much. I mean, I would never want to go there because I would be totally freaked out. But then at the same time, I like want to go there because I'm so intrigued. But anyway, <laughs> Now that you're like totally creeped out and like clicking out, don't click out. I promise I'll stop talking about it. So one of the main complaints that I saw on Goodreads was that the body farm was just in one scene and that it wasn't really worth naming a whole book about the body farm. But point number one, the body farm is where they find out the piece of evidence that they need to nail the criminal. So that seems pretty important to me. Point number two, all of these yellow tabs right here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten tabs. That's all talking about the body farm and different instances with the body farm. I'm not really sure why people are disappointed with the title of the book. I don't know, maybe they wanted the body farm in it more. I thought it was in there just enough. And I thought it was kind of cool because in the beginning, like in the tabs, like it's just kind of mentioning the body farm, like you know what a body farm is. And of course, I didn't know what a body farm was the first time that I read this. And I was like, what is a body farm? What do they keep talking about? What is this body farm? And then once they got to the body farm, I was like, oh my gosh, so intriguing yet uh, so scary. Of course, the second time that I read through it, like I knew what it was, but I tabbed them all to show people that it's obviously in the book more than just when you find out what it is and so forth. So yeah, I don't know what they're talking about. The crime does get a little complicated as most crimes do, I would assume, in like real life. But there's so many other things that happened other than the central crime that is being investigated in this story. There's things going on with her niece and there's things going on with another detective in the book. And it's just, it all kind of like just wraps up together. What I loved about this book, and I didn't really realize it until I finished it, was that there was a ton of character development. Now, obviously, I've read past this book in the series. Like, I've read other books, so I know, like, the final outcome of, like, that particular character development little seed. I kind of know how it grows. But there are so many things in this book that the whole, like, storyline with Lucy, her niece, I mean, I totally forgot, like, her beginning in the series. So she is like one of my favorite characters in the series and yeah, she just, she had a lot of development in this and a lot of like growing up to do and she was just, yeah, so that was interesting. She's still in college in this one. And then, um, of course the main protagonist, Kay, um, she kind of is going through a lot with the other two main guys in this, um. His name is Marino, but I always end up calling him Mario. I don't know why, like Mario, like not, I don't know, like <laughs> Marino. And then there's Wesley who's also in this and he's like the lead guy, he's like the boss. And then, um, yeah, so there's a lot of development um, as far as their interactions with each other. So that's really a lot in here. And it changes throughout the series, but it's just really cool to kind of like remember, this is how it used to be. So one of my favorite things about this is the great detective skills. Scarpetta is able to really pick up on the smallest details and she doesn't take things for what they are. She's like, okay, I heard you, but I'm going to investigate it myself. And she like thinks outside the box and I really enjoyed the way that the story came together and the crime was solved and I just really enjoyed it. The last thing I want to mention is that in the series, Lucy is a lesbian. And in this story, her aunt, Kay Scarpetta, doesn't know that she is. So we're just starting to see the development of that. And I thought it was really cool. It wasn't in here a bunch, but it was one of those little things that like I know happens later on down the line. And this is kind of like where it started. And it was just really interesting. So I really enjoyed 
overall everything except for it being a little slow paced a little bit dated even though it didn't bother me and yeah so I rated this four stars and if you enjoy crime fiction then I definitely recommend trying this book or any others in the Scarpetta series from Patricia Cornwell but that's it for today I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of a rambly review and I'll see you again soon bye